um, show. And you don't have to show your image. You can show a static image. So if you're camera shy, you can still come to Zoom and just show a static image. I would absolutely um, love to see your questions. I can't see your questions if you're if you're in um, Facebook. Um, so if you can come over to Zoom, it'd be, be great. So with that, let me raise this up and we'll look at watercolor sticks. Okay. So these watercolor sticks are ones I travel with and there's 51 watercolor sticks. And we're gonna, we're gonna play with them today. There's 51 and um, what they are is their pigment, the same pigment that we have in the watercolor tubes, um, but with very little water. So the only way that we get these to stick together is put a huge amount of pigment. So they're very, very laden with pigment. There is no wax, so they're not a crayon. They're a pigment stick, or um, if you want to think of it away, they're a, a, a cylindrical pan that you can put in your hand. And you can, you can draw with them. Giovanni will show you this tomorrow. You can draw with them. You can do, you can do wet into wet. And choose how much, how much of the color you want to put onto your, um, onto your paper. It's the same exact pigment that's in the tubes. You can also do from the end. They're great to travel with. So you kind of make your choice of what you want to do and, and um, how you want to how you want to use them. Again, there's 51 colors. The interesting thing about the sticks, they're the price point of them is equal to a series one, which is the um, the low lowest cost of the tubes. And yet within the sticks, there's there's three series four colors. There's four series three colors, Primatex, for example, and there's 22 series two colors. So more than 39 of the 51 colors um, are, are other than a series one, yet they're all priced at the series one price point. They, um, they have great pigment load. So I'll show you another one. This is, this is in Danthrone blue in Danthrone blue. So I can paint from the end of the stick. Makes them easy to travel with. So I can paint from the end of the stick. I can put them in water. take as much of the pigment off as I want to. Giovanni will show you more of this and how he uses them um, tomorrow. So please, please watch that tomorrow if you'll enjoy it. You can do, again, wet into wet. Which one is present this time? Okay, so Anna Marie asks a question. And her question is, how much, how much of the pigment is, is present, present in the stick compared to the tube and the half pan? So you can actually make, um, This is probably equal to two full pans. It's, it's just a lot of, a lot of pigment. Um, the, 
So it actually has a very, very high pigment load. So it's the only way that we get it to stick together. The, the half pan um, is very condensed. It's more condensed than the stick, yet the stick is much bigger. So they're all kind of different, um, all have the same exact pigment. It's just the amount of water that is um, absent. Can you show how you blend with the six? So Evelyn, I can, I can mix two sticks together and Giovanni's watching right now. And I hope he's taking notes. He's shaking his head that he is. Um, he'll, he will show you tomorrow how to blend. I can show you roughly. I'll just put a couple of colors together if you want to see that. So this is the um, permanent alizarin crimson. Now, probably what you'd want to do is instead of doing what I'm doing here, you could maybe I'll just make this a little bit a little bit opaque. So this is this is titanium white. Hard for you to see it in this. I'll show you here. So you can't see it, but that's titanium white. And That's just going to make it more opaque. Versus. Are the stick colors that are not offered in the tube? Um, no. Uh, every color that is the, in the sticks <coughs> is available in the tubes. Um, this is Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. Uh, 140-pound cold press. <coughs> What's your finish? Can you blend the colors? Yeah, we can try blending some more. So there's 51 colors, and it's just a it's just another format that, as an artist, um, you can have a color in. So let's try some. This is Hansa Yellow Deep. Actually, one of my favorite colors is let's do New Gamboge. So this is a lot of water. You can also shave this and put the shavings and um, dilute the shavings. That'll work. So we might, how about if we try, oh, this is a, this is, so this is new, this is new Gamboge. And this one, this is Thalo Turquoise. And as we've always played with the, the thalos, the thalos just are unbelievable in their color. So this is thalo turquoise. You don't have to do it this way, you do it other ways. Um, I mean, just, it's gonna wet out really quickly. And then you could draw with it if you wanted to draw with it. 
So let me do maybe a mix of these two. That's new gamboge and thalo turquoise. So that's new gamboge and thalo turquoise. So this is cerulean blue. So tomorrow, Giovanni, who will be on at 1030, will show you how he paints with them. I've seen artists paint, paint in all different ways. Sometimes they'll put three or four of them between their, their fingers. And they'll sometimes just paint so these have a heavy pigment load much less water than uh, much less water than in the two by far the one that has the least amount of water is the is the pan it's the most condensed but for these to stay in their form, there has to be a huge amount of pigment. So it has a very high pigment load. How much granulation and colors in the six stop? Okay, so let's, so that is from Caroline. So let's do, do a couple of those. So this room. I want to find some of that granite to show you that. So uh, let's take a look at that. So here's one that we talk about quite a bit. And this is the this is the lunar black. You could do this in the porcelain tray. You could do it off the stick. Uh, so you can see lunar black is in tubes granulates really well. I mean, it granulates really well here. So they granulate quite well. Show you it off the stick. John, it's fantastic to, to see your painting. <laughs> I think they're all waiting to see yours tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, yes. So really granulates really, really well. Can you set the cap on the paper? Can you set the cap on the paper to see? I don't know what that means. Um, so this is the, that is the lunar black. 
how much granulation, okay, can you, uh, Giovanni, Okay, so, so red greens, um, R R Y D G R E N C. Um, no, there's gum arabic in these. The, this is a watercolor, so it absolutely has gum arabic. It's 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 just like our tubes. So the half pans have gum arabic, the watercolor sticks have gum arabic, and the tubes have gum arabic. To hold this together, we just have to, we add a huge amount of pigment, but there's always gum arabic. So there's gum arabic in this. And it's it has it has the same light fastness. So if the light fastness, um, if we look at the Lizrin, let's look at uh, buff titanium. So buff titanium is a light fastness of one in the tubes. It's a light fastness of one in the pans and it's a light fastness of one in the sticks. So gum arabic is not missing. These contain gum arabic. They just contain a, a large amount of pigment. And again, when we talk about light fastness, it's not gum arabic that makes something light fast. It's the pigment. So it's always about the pigment. So if your, if your pigment is light fast, then your color is going to be light fast. If you if you put a light fast, high light fast pigment in a half pen, it's going to be light fast. If you put a high light fast pigment into a stick, it's going to be light fast. It doesn't change because of what the what the thing looks like. It's all about the pigment. So thank you for letting me clarify that. This does have gum arabic because it's a watercolor paint, um, and it does have. Um, a lot of pigment. So it will be, it will be very stable. It's very, very, very stable. And so how do you know that, John? It's because we test this on the xenon feedometer, just like we would test the half pans and that we would test the tubes. We test them all in the same way. Okay. Um, thank you, but why is it blossoming and, and not smooth? So I think maybe Giovanni can answer that tomorrow. What I'm showing you is um, just what the just what the sticks look like. So if you this is cold pressed paper, so you can see the granulation. If you still see granulation, if it was hot pressed, it'd just be more radial. Kind of what I'm showing you is is. These are, these are ways you can use it. So you can do it from the end of the stick. You can do it on the paper. You can, I got a piece of paper. Is lunar blue available? So lunar blue is not available. Lunar black is available, but not lunar blue. Um, thank you, Giovanni, you answered that one. Okay. All right. So let me show you sodalite. And again, how much water you use, you're in total control of that. You're in control of how much water you want to use. I'm 
putting a lot of water down. Um, so I'm just demonstrating what it kind of what the colors look like. So you can see the granulation from this so light. So if it granulates from the tube, it'll granulate in the stick. Okay. Now you could also you could also draw with this. So I'm going to do kind of a, a wide one. You can see here, there's no wax. This is gum arabic and pigment. And so it's not going to go into the indentations of the paper. If it were a wax, like a crayon, it would do that. But there's no wax in this. It's you're, you're painting with a pigment stick. And then you can, you can wet those out. I pushed really hard. Many times the artist will want to see the lines. If you don't want to see the lines, if you don't want to see the lines, then again, you could just take off whatever amount you want from the stick. And again, you're in control of that. You can also use your palette if you want to. I can do that. So let me see. Uh, graphite gray. Graphite gray. There's very few opaque colors. But there's a couple. So this is graphite gray. So that's graphite gray from where I put it down. So graphite gray is Graphite gray is an opaque color. I'll do it again. You may use more water than me. You may use less water than me. Yes. So Caroline says, can you show us the stick holders? I think I can. I'll speed up for a second. Um, you had teased earlier in the year that you were more colors coming out. Um, so kind of always looking at what colors are popular in the stick. Um, yes, I'll, I'll share those with you. Let's see, can you paint your transparency? Okay, so let me show you another one. How about you find bismuth? So there's a lot of quinacridones too. So I can show you the quinacridones. So I can't show you opaque if the color is not opaque, but I can show you a, a transparent. So this is the um, quinacridone violet. I messed that one up. PV19. Okay. The Quin Gold that we have is the new version. I ran out of that pigment. Um, that pigment's no longer made. So the Quinn Gold, there was um, Quinn Gold, and then within Quinn Gold, there were several shades of Quinn Gold. And the Quinn Gold shade that we used is no longer made.
So you see that uh, they are sticks. They, you know, they can get on your hands. But as artists, I'm sure you're very used to that. So let me show you another one. Then I'll get that so you can get that colder. Here's burnt umber. Now, some of these where they, they lock really tight. So you're kind of in control of, of um, how you want them to look. So this is the Quinburn orange. Uh, and I'll find the gold here and show you the gold. So you have Quinburn orange. Very, 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 very popular color. The neat thing about the sticks is you can actually control color. So Quinn burnt orange. Let me show you Quinn gold. And then Giovanni, for those of you asking questions from uh, um, uh, how to how to use it from a practical standpoint, um, Giovanni will show you that tomorrow. It's pretty thin. It's very fabulous. What you do with that. And he's watching right now. So if you have questions um, for him to get ready for tomorrow, just. This is Quinn Sienna. So burnt orange, this is Quinciana. Oh, there you go, that's Quinciana. Did I answer that, Caroline? So Quinciana, Quin burnt orange. I'm trying to figure out what I do with my um, gold. Let me see the other bag. I went to the eye doctor yesterday and said, you know, you need glasses. So it's a little bit interesting trying to find these colors. I'll see if I can find you that plastic real quick. Ugh. that was going to happen. So I will show that tomorrow, Carolyn. I need to find it. Um, so let's look at some other ones. This is the permanent lizard crimson. I'm sure you both, uh, you're both here. So this is the permanent alizarin crimson. Uh, 
permanent user of Crimson. And this is a lizard crimson. permanent lesion crimson, a lesion crimson. Um, 100 plus years, and this one is, because it's a coal tar derivative, this one is fugitive. However, we sell a huge amount of this one, because for anybody that wants to paint like the masters used to paint, it would be, it's the alizarin. If you want to use the same color, but have a last a long time, then it's the permanent version. This is permanent green, permanent green. And the thing too is you can, you can flick the color. You can have some fun with the, some fun with them as well. Yeah, sometimes just fun to have fun. So this is, I'll show you one of the Dan Thrones. I've never seen green, I really like. See, Anthron Blue. It's a pretty blue. So we do have the moon glow. This is moon glow. And then you can do it this way, or you could do, you could do what it, So the moon glow is the ultramarine blue, viridian, and endocrine red. So if you don't want those marks, then you would just either use
So if you use the sticks, maybe what you can do tomorrow, if you'd be kind enough to do it, is have a sample of your work. And because we can see it in Zoom, I'd love to see a couple of them. That'd be fantastic. Um, Giovanni will be doing a couple of um, artwork pieces that you can see, you can see how he uses it. Thank you, Giovanni, appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> and so this is, this is the moon glow. And you still see so you can get that fantastic granulation. Um, and so it's really, it's, it's, the, the, it's the power in your hand of how you want to use it. If you want this in your toolbox to be able to use, um, if you just like using tubes, then you can just use the, uh, the moon glow that um, is in the tube. So this is buff titanium. Buff titanium is, is um, it's a very popular color. Titanium white, buff titanium. It'll get more pronounced as it dries. This is Hansa, Hansa yellow medium. No, we're doing black, no, we're doing white. on black watercolor paper. Um, Caroline's going to be on. I think it's uh, the week after next. And she's going to be showing watercolor ground. So I'm super appreciative of that. That's on, on black. It's on white. This one's thalo green yellow shade. Um, as Carolyn was, as I was reading over here, um, there is a there is um, a plastic container for the sticks. It holds five, and it can be um, snapped apart in any increment of those five. Leave it together for the five, or you can break off one, or two, or three, or four, however you want to do it. Let me see. Let's see. Any questions.
this particular color, this is, this is hematite. Hematite packs really tight when it dries. But it, it does, uh, it's certainly tactile. So are there any other questions that you have? I think they'll enjoy tomorrow um, with Giovanni. There's the moon glow. So it's just another way to have a tool in your palette. I can show you what they look like. I think the interesting tomorrow will be how an artist practically uses them for, from a practical standpoint. I'm going to try the graphite one more time. And the lasting power of the sticks is, is just huge. That's the graphite. And we ask a lot of really nice questions. It, uh, it's always helpful to hear questions. So thank you. All right. This is the um, cobalt teal blue. brush. The uh, plastic holder is good because the one thing about the sticks, when they do touch each other, you know, when they're in a bag, these were in a bag and they touch each other, um, they can transfer over their color, which is easy to get rid of. Um, but a little different than a tube that, that seals off. It just takes a second to get rid of it. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Thank you. I think Anna Marie has her sticks ready in a case. And just now she was showing it. Do you mind sh showing it again? Oh, which one? Yeah, great. Oh, neat. <laughs> 
Very nice. Perfect, Anna Marie. Yeah, very nice. Okay. So what I did, so online, um, there is the spreadsheet that has all the pigment information. And so at any point, you can always go in and you can sort, we're gonna make it easier. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I'm working on the website right now to make it easier to do this, but if you know about Excel, it's easy to go into it and you can sort by whether a stick or five mil or 15 mil. Um, it'll tell you the name in English, French, German, Italian. You can actually find the common name. In most, in most places, the common name is the same, but for example, here in the carbazole violet, um, it's dioxanine purple, it's carbazole violet. So that's the common name. This is the English name. It'll tell you the color index name pigment blue number 36, the light fastness, staining, the granulation, and the transparency. So anytime you want, you can print this out for anything, five mil, 15 mil, um, your favorite color to see you know, what it is. So any way you wanna do it, it's just um, another way to have knowledge. Let's see here. Carolina, see you. And Betis, Julia. Awesome. So. So when we start out with these, we extrude them. These are extruded. Um, that come out like a big fat macaroni, probably as, 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 as big as my finger. And then they, we dry them over time. And so we get rid of that moisture. And they'll probably come out in um, 18 to two feet lengths. And it, it takes, it takes uh, several weeks to get the water out of them. It's a long process to get the water out. This is what we looked at today. I'll show you the mess I made on my table here. Yeah, so being next to each other is probably not the best way to do it. Um, it's artistic. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> um, uh, abstract, John. But, but I'll, I'll have some cleaning to do tonight. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Never, never clean your table. Never clean my table. Well, you know, I finally got rid of my rug at similar, home. Similar on my pallets. Never clean. I'll show you what I'll show you what we did as a as a group. Ah, this is what we've gone over. The, this is what we did in the last year. Oh, I don't know if you can see this. These are the 500 tubes that we went through this year. So if you stayed with me since January, this whole box, which has 500 tubes, we went through this whole box. Oh. <laughs> it's a it part just, for all, all artists. <laughs> yeah, it's just a lot of, every time, I, every time I couldn't find a tube fast enough, I had to go down to the store and get another one. So I have doubles and triples and but that's okay. All right, so that's that's kind of it with the, the sticks. I just wanted to show you an answer. Um, sorry, let's see. Larry says, are you going to make available color wheel that had on the ancient website? Yes, yes, Larry. So we're gonna to try to make it very, um, uh, very, uh, very interactive. Um, so the answer to that is yes. See, yes. So we're gonna make that available. Also gonna have a wish list. 
that you can say which colors you have and then which colors you want. So you can keep track of that. Um, trying to make it more, trying to make it more innovative. So we went over just a subset of the colors today. Let me show you what we did. Show you real quick. So these are the ones we went over today. Um, about 30. And then Giovanni is going to take you more from a practical standpoint tomorrow. So please have your questions. Um, I know, how do you use them, et cetera, because Giovanni could answer that. And then if any of you use the sticks, I'd love to see, if you're not, uh, I'd love to see uh, your artwork. So Anna, I can see some stuff behind your back there on the wall. Um, love to see what you've done with them. I think that's the, the beautiful thing about um, being able to see now versus just uh, type. John, what, one moment to show you. Your table with your end and you shot a, a photograph <laughs> of, of this right here. With your hands. <laughs> oh, with my hands. There we go. One moment. Yeah. Yeah, it gets all over your hands. Okay. For the, oh, you took my a yeah, for my next oh. watercolor. <laughs> there we go. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. So with that tomorrow, um, Giovanni will be on. Thank you again, Giovanni. And he's gonna show you from a practical standpoint how he uses the sticks. Um, I think that's always, it's, it's kind of really what I wanna do now more on a go forward basis. I'm gonna go over, for example, how the grounds work. And then Carolyn's gonna take it from an artist perspective. So if you have questions about how an artist would use it, please ask Carolyn, ask Giovanni. Um, they can take it kind of to the to the really neat level of the artist. Um, and that's where we'll be going week after week. There'll be, I'll do a presentation, then the, I'm going to ask the artist who will come in the day after to do it from a practical standpoint. Okay, so with that, thank you so much for spending your day with me. I know for some of you, it's late at night. I appreciate that. Some of you, it's early in the morning, and I appreciate that. I just appreciate it. So thank you. I wish you all health and look to see you again tomorrow. So thank you, everybody. Good to see your faces. Thank you. Bye-bye.